Okay, our next presentation is entitled uh, What is Torwash? Overview of a novel hydrothermal treatment process presented by Levian de Leger. Levian has a master's degree in chemical engineering from Delft Technical University and in 2020 co-founded Torwash, a TNO spin-off company. Levian is currently working at Torwash to develop and commercialize the technology for the conversion of biogenic materials into energy carriers. Uh, Levian, the yours. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I think my uh, presentation falls a bit outside of the other presentations because what we do uh, has nothing to do with the F-cubes. Um, so it's, um, we move separate ways at a certain moment, uh, but that's no problem. Uh, we, uh, we have a very good interconnection and we, um, we learn from each other. Actually, uh, what we did is uh, at the beginning took some uh, direction and then moved on further. So I will uh, explain a little what we, uh, what we are, uh, uh, what's uh, a point of development we are at now. Um, also, a bit of our the philosophy of the um, of the uh, of the company itself, and also um, what we are trying to achieve with the, the Tor Wars technology. And here it already says uh, on the screen uh, what is the um, what is the goal of, of of the development that we are doing right now, and that is that to convert all sludge into reusable products. Uh, at the moment, you can see that um, uh, uh, we were talking here with paper sludge, for example, uh, but the, our focus is, is mainly on sewer sludge. So that is sludge coming from uh, the, the communal wastewater treatment plants. And here it already says uh, our, our philosophy. Uh, so we talk about energy a lot today, uh, so converting uh, to, into energy carriers. But it's not only energy that you can do with it. So um, actually our goal is to have a choice. Uh, so, uh, and that's what we say, uh, a sludge treatment at the source and uh, as a source of renewable products. And renewable products can also be used to make um, like biochemicals uh, through uh, gasification, for example, or fermentation, for example. Um, uh, so that, that means that it's, um, uh, it, it, it should be more versatile, what, uh, what, uh, what comes out of the Torwash plant. Um, another important thing is that, that we uh, made a choice <coughs> where sludge treatment, especially in a communal sludge treatment, has always a very centralized uh, way of, uh, of, of uh, disposal, uh, either landfill or, uh, but we say no, we keep the waste at, at, at the source and then treat it there. Uh, so that means that the design of the plant should be also able to um, uh, be cheap enough to, to uh, also to go on very small scale. So who is Torbosch? It was already announced a little by Mike. Uh, so we are a spin-off company from, from TNO. So it was founded by, uh, by uh, these three people. And uh, it's pa Pavlina and, and Jan. Jan is the inventor of Torwash. And Pavlina has been uh, the project leader of uh, all the Torwash project, projects, outside f cubes of course. Um, so we are all have a Torwash background. So we are all experts in hydrothermal treatment. Um, and actually the focus has been always been on wet organic waste streams that can can be anything. Yeah, we, we, we have already, in the F-cube there, we have three examples, yeah, but there's so many more. There's so many biological waste in the world. And if we use that, I think um, the, uh, the, uh, the climate change uh, problem that we have now would be mitigated already quite a lot if we can use all the biological waste which is rotting away in the world. So if we look now to the, um, 
a situation of, of sewage sludge inside the EU. Uh, and these are data from Eurostat, so it's most of the, mostly it's not very actual, but um, it, it, all, it gives a very good picture. Uh, the, the first thing that, uh, that you see is that Germany has a, 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 a very uh, good sewage system, uh, so lots of uh, con households are connected to the sewage system. And the, what they also do, uh, the, the, ye the yellow line says it is incinerated. So we see that uh, 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 a development is going on uh, from uh, land use, so soil and agriculture, so use it as a fertilizer. Uh, we see m more and more that these uh, applications uh, are shifting and uh, are not possible for uh, for application of, of sewage sludge anymore. So incineration is almost the only way to uh, to, to treat sewage uh, sludge uh, in a large scale. Um, if you look at the UK also, the UK has always been the uh, uh, land use uh, country, but that's also going down. And of course, the Netherlands already made that step uh, so all the sewage sludge in the Netherlands is incinerated. Landfill or, or uh, agricultural use is not allowed anymore. So what happens now? The, the sludge from the, from the wastewater treatment plant is, uh, is, is dewatered at the treat water, uh, uh, wastewater plant. So that dewatering means adding a lot of uh, uh, flocculant, a lot of... Um, um, uh, surfactants and then uh, uh, press it out or either uh, use a centrifuge. Then you get a mixture of 80% water and 20% of, uh, of uh, dry solids. And that material is then pumped into a, a big truck. And in the Netherlands alone, 100 trucks a day are traveling through the country to, uh, to bring the sludge to the incineration plants. Well, you, like I said, so the, uh, the agricultural and landfill is phased out, and that is mainly due to the decomposition of the, of the sewage sludge. It is, it is pretty dirty, actually. So it contains heavy metals. You don't want to spread that over your, over your land. And another big problem are the me medicine residues, uh, like antibiotics. That is also then uh, spread over your land, which you really don't want. So if we go to the, uh, the, the current route, so it's uh, sludge incineration. If you look at sewage sludge worldwide, actually, it, it is huge. You cannot imagine how much it is, 200 million tons every year. And moving to incineration, these are, um, uh, uh, there's not enough uh, uh, capacity for incineration worldwide. So that means that the prices are rising. And we, since we started towards for sewage sludge, we already see in the Netherlands like an average uh, uh, treatment price of 75 is now moving to 125. Uh, so that is that is incredible. I heard from 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 Marco also prices in Italy move up to 200 euros, which I heard, for example, in a country like like Taiwan, where there's not enough room uh, for for these kind of investments. Um, also, the prices are like 200, uh, well, US dollar in that case. So, like I said, also, it's, it's the use of fossil chemicals. The, the flocculants are uh, polyelectrolytes, so that these are made from, from crude oil. And, of course, extensive road transport. If you look at the incineration plant itself, it is, it, is, it is a huge factory, actually. That's what, what, what it is. So it is capital intensive. So these kind of installations, they cost a lot of money they, and they bear a lot of risk. Yeah, because once there is a problem in the incineration plant, uh, a, a huge part of the, uh, the, the sludge treatment in a country is, uh, is, is falling apart. And it's not circular. That's also an important one. They just burn it, and then the water goes out of the pipe, and, uh, and the ashes, they are going to a landfill. 
Uh oh. There we go. Okay. If we go to uh, to the alternative we want to offer, which is the which is door wash. Um, like I said, every every wastewater treatment will have its own small tow wash uh, system, and actually, uh, you can say you convert everything into into uh, energy carriers, um, and the only thing you is left is is the water which comes out of the sludge, and that is returned to the wastewater treatment plant for for further uh, purification. So that actually that makes the uh, the wastewater treatment plant sludge free. So. What do we make out of sludge? Um, the, the solid pellets, eh, they are carbon rich. So if it could be a good source for, for, for energy, of course, but it also, eh, through gasification, for example, uh, you can make syngas out of that. And from there, from syngas, you can, you can um, compose all kind of organic uh, molecules. Uh, also used for, for, for fuels, maybe, but also for, for other uh, other materials as well. What we see is that the the, the torch process decomposes the organic material and w gives a very high concentration of fatty acids. Um, fatty acids are very interesting. Also, uh, you can make biogas out of it uh, through anaerobic digestion. That's also a possibility. But we are also uh, going to test it for other applications, uh, for example, fermentation. Um, and that is also uh, with the goal to make uh, biochemicals out of, uh, out of the, uh, the streams from the towers plant. Also, the process dissolves phosphates from the sewage sludge. If you then uh, precipitate the phosphates, then you can um, have a source for, uh, for fertilizer. Well, I go through this pretty quickly. The, the most important one is is is, um, is the value proposition. Uh, so these are the um, uh, the, uh, the results of a project prior to the FQ pro uh, project, which is uh, um, testing the the pilot plant uh, for sewage sludge, which has been done at uh, at the wastewater treatment plant in the Netherlands. And we found out that. So OPEX, so the operational costs, so not the financial cost, but the OPEX itself is 80% lower, which is mainly caused because you don't have to pay this 100 euros disposal cost anymore. And so that goes very quickly. 90% less, uh, less product means also 90% uh, less transport. Um, we don't use any chemicals, so it's purely a temperature treatment of uh, of the of the sludge. If you add those together, no transport and no fossil chemicals, but also uh, how much uh, uh, CO2 are you avoiding by not using like coal, uh, but uh, towards pellets, then you uh, you get about um, uh, a 50 percent reduction of CO2. But I think uh, Marco will talk to that later. So it makes it 100% circular. And if you make biogas and you use the biogas for, for um, let's say, internal heating and drying, then you can also claim that it is 100% energy neutral. So actually, you're sacrificing part of the, of the dry matter uh, for, uh, for energy production for the, for the system. Um, well, the market is big. Uh, so we made, a, an, uh, we made an analysis of the European market. And actually, the only uh, uh, th uh, countries where we want to focus on at the beginning, in the beginning, um, because there you see an increasing shortage of incineration capacity and increasing prices uh, as a result. So Netherlands, Ger uh, Germany, and the UK. And while well, the, av the available market there uh, we calculated at more than 800 systems, so that is huge for us. That's we cannot imagine how much how much that would be. If you go to the um, to to the system uh, for sewage sludge um, uh, treatment, 
so it is located so at the wastewater treatment plant. The sludge is then uh, heated to the uh, inside the Taurus reactor and then brought to a filter, the a filter press, and where the liquid fraction and the solid fraction are separated. The, the solid fraction can be post-dried, not really necessary, but if you want to have, let's say, a shelf life uh, of uh, a couple of months, you, you, you better dry it because when it's wet, then even Torwash treated material is, uh, is tending to, uh, to rot. Uh, the end product could be then bio pellets. Um, the liquid fraction is fed to, a, uh, uh, to an, ano an anaerobic reactor. Uh, as we see it now, and then to produce biogas, you can have a choice. Can I uh, use it for internal heating, or do I sell it as, uh, as green gas? Um, then also, the phosphate, is uh, the, which has been dissolved in the, in the liquid fraction, is then, um, is, is then precipitated into, for example, struvite. The rejection water is then uh, fed back to the... Uh, wastewater treatment plant because not all the, the COD has been removed. Yeah, so the anaerobic reactor removes about 75% of, of all the organic matter and the 25 is still in, in, uh, in the rejection water. And that goes back to the uh, wastewater treatment plant and, and gets the uh, aerobic treatment again. So what have we done so far? I men already mentioned that we, um, we did the pilot uh, testing at the, uh, the wastewater treatment plant of Almere, which is a pretty big one, uh, so 300,000 PE. And that is, uh, for the Netherlands, that's, that, that's a, a, a very uh, large, uh, large plant, so like, like in the top 10. So you, see, you re recognize this, uh, this picture, of course, because it's the same pilot plant that we uh, used for the, um, uh, the F-cube testing. Um, with the, 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 the blue glove, you can see uh, how, the, uh, how the filter cake looked like. So this is not dried or anything. And it looks pretty fibrous. That, that also uh, was astonishing to us because we didn't, really didn't know where the fibers came from. So in a separate project after that, we uh, were looking at the, um, uh, at the, uh, the, en the energy uh, uh, properties of, of the, uh, the, the dry material. So also there we did the uh, test pelletization tests and it looked really well. So this is a very interesting picture. So I already mentioned the, uh, the, the results. Um, what, is, what was also astonishing for us is, th is that the HHV, so the calorific value, uh, of, the, of the pellets was really high. Uh, that's because you are partly torrifying the, uh, the biological material and removing oxygen. So that means that, that the, uh, the calorific value is, is, going, uh, is going up. Uh, so it's, al although there is a, about 20% uh, minerals inside, you still have a 20 gigajoule per ton. And comparing to wood pellets, for example, these are about 17 or 18 gigajoule per ton. So actually, um, not bad what we made there. So the next stage is a, is a scale up that uh, we are building right now. So it's a 20 times scale up where the pilot plant uh, is, is, is laid out for 50 kilograms per hour. The demonstration pl plant will do uh, a thousand kilograms per hour, and that is feed feeding door wash. Uh, so it's uh, we feed with uh, with about five percent dry solids, and from that it's then uh, uh, is one uh, is one ton per hour. We um, are already. Uh, uh, well, running for two years now, so that's including the design and, and the construction. And, um, well, also the amount of partners is, uh, is way bigger than, uh, than, than we had for the, uh, for, the, for the pilot testing. So if you look at, at, at the roadmap of, uh, of Torwash, you can see that um, the demonstration plant, uh, that will continue, but um, 
like in 2024, we already know pretty much that it works. So from there, we will start also the, des uh, the design of the and, and engineering of a full scale plant. So another 20 times, so 20 tons per hour, and that is sufficient for the sludge treatment of one large scale uh, wastewater treatment plant. So 2025, we are, uh, we hope we get the money and all the permits to start the construction of, of the um, full scale plant. And then, well, with all the results from, from, from that uh, project, we hope to, um, to bring it to market uh, the year after in 2026. Uh, it's very ambitious, uh, but I think the problem is big enough to work hard to find the, find the solution quickly. So these are some, uh, some pictures. Um, at the uh, at at the left top, you can you can see the, the let's say the, the first uh, the first activity. So uh, that this is the place where uh, uh, later uh, it it was it was of course uh, mechanized. But uh, this is the manual uh, first uh, first dig of the uh, of of the the foundation at the wastewater treatment plant. So the waterschap Aanmaas is is indeed owner of the of the plant where we are going to build. Here you can uh, see on the left top side, right top side, sorry, is the welding activities. So the company Eliquo has, um, uh, uh, has been um, our partner for the, the construction of the, uh, of, of the whole plant. And this is uh, the welding shop in, in Germany where the, um, the reactor here is, is uh, actually welded. On the you see how it is looking now. Well, it's already changed, but uh, on, the, on the left bottom side, you can see how big the reactor is now. Uh, compare it to the uh, to the small uh, pilot plant, which uh, still fits in a container. And well, if you make something 20 times bigger, containers are, are, are not sufficient anymore. And the layout of the um, of the plant. Uh, is, uh, is is given in on the next picture. So the the topics that are, we we have to uh, to work on is how is the integration with the the, the, the wastewater treatment plant going? And because you are releasing a lot of COD, you're releasing uh, a lot of uh, phosphorus and nitrogen. How is that uh, how is that affecting the operation of the wastewater treatment plant? Can we remove it sufficiently to have the um, the emissions uh, from from the from the plant itself to to uh, not to exceed these uh, these emissions these numbers. Also, um, capex reduction is all is all always very important. Uh, it should be uh, it, uh, it it should be viable uh, and and uh, it should not be much more expensive than than um, uh, per per ton sludge than uh, than the existing um, operation. Um, also, we need to uh, to figure out maintenance, and that's mainly cleaning. Uh, the problem with hydrothermal treatment uh, is uh, what happens inside the reactor. Do we get clogging? Do we get buildup of organic material? Is there other phosphates? Are they uh, are they covering the, the walls of the of the reactor? These kind of things we have to figure out. So. Um, it looks like a big installation, but actually every pipe we can look to the to the inside into the inside, so we can check everything and we can measure everything that that we need to. Also, biogas production is uh, is tested, although on small scale, but with a long duration test. So any um, uh, um, any F long term effects will also be tested, and. It says suitable fuel for SMB, and SMB is an incineration plant. And um, they, actually what they do is they dry and then they incinerate. And with the incineration energy, they, that's sufficient to dry. But of course, we already pre-dried it for them, but so they are going to test it. Can we just incinerate? And then with the excess energy, can we make electricity? So this is an overview of the of the, the benefits that we uh, that we see for, with with Thorwash. I mean, already mentioned them a lot. Um, and well, that's my last slide. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Any questions from the floor? Yeah, Tim. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, one of the last advantages you mentioned was 60% phosphate recovery. Now, uh, in the Netherlands, a lot of the water boards have been looking at recovering phosphate, and some are doing this already. But they always run into the issue that um, there's still a risk of, for instance, pathogens or medicine residues still being present in this phosphate. So it, it's difficult to find a way to reuse this uh, recovered phosphate then. Is that any different in the tor wash uh, process? Because, of course, you have a hydrothermal uh, sort of pretreatment step, which maybe yep. kills these kind of... Uh well, it, yeah, but it doesn't... It, pathogens are dead, for sure. At that temperature and uh, during that period, they, they, it's, it's, it's completely sterilized. That, so that's a, that's a big benefit, but that's a short-term benefit. Um, because uh, like if there are say medicine residues uh, in in the water and in the sludge itself as, as well that um, it, that is depending do they do they end up in the solid fraction or do they end up in the water fraction that is also part of what we have to uh, to to figure out during this process as um, but for sure is that um, Phosphates, uh, especially which the biological uh, phosphate removal, then uh, they go into solution during the tor pro the tor wash process um, that we have to remove anyway. So, uh, 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 so sixty percent of the phosphates they go into into solution, and forty percent of the phosphates uh, not. So they stay in the in the solid fraction. So. What is the what are the contaminate uh, the contaminants inside the phosphate? That is really something we have to to, to find out, like okay. medicine residues, for example. And and that will be part of this project yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But for sure, pathogens are dead. Yeah. Then I don't know where. Okay, yeah, just before we, we'll, we'll give that a try in a moment. Uh, we just have a couple of questions uh, from online, whether it's yeah. to you, Levienne, or whether it's to Heather. I'll ask a question. So um, the question is, why use a filter press and not another technology? You mentioned that the process uses no chemicals, so the process does not require any catalyst. True. Uh, that's a question. Yeah. So, yeah. so actually, water is the catalyst. And uh, it's a pretty powerful catalyst. So we, um, and that's I think is is the the, uh, the big benefit of of the tor wash process, um, or actually, yeah, the, uh, many hydrothermal processes uh, uh, work without catalysts, and um, it makes it expensive. It makes it more vulnerable if you uh, if you w if you really need to use catalyst or chemicals in, in general so you don't want these additives you don't really don't want and it's not necessary yeah so it's that's uh, your first question was before the catalyst uh, about the the filter press the so filter press yes so what what we see is that uh, the 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 solids which are very hydrophilic at the beginning because these are actually sludge is dead bacteria and they are designed to, uh, to, to, to stick to the water. Um, what we do is, uh, is make it hydrophobic. And with hydrophobic material, actually, the harder you press, the more water you get out. So there are many ways to, to, to get rid of the water, like a belt press or like a centrifuge or a, a, these kind of things. But actually, with a filter press, is the only tool that can build up so much pressure that you can press out so much water that, that you end up with 60% dry matter. And of course, we can, we can also uh, check other, uh, and, but it is also depending on, on the, the application of, of the, uh, the dried solids. Uh, if it should be as dry as possible, or is 40% dry solids enough? Well, then you might look into other, uh, other 
uh, methods for uh, for uh, dewatering, uh, like 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 a centrifuge. Okay, thank you very much. Now I I see on my screen here that Pavlina is joining us. Good. Uh, here she is. Can you hear me, Pavlina? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. So good morning, everyone, from our demonstration sites that you see behind me. I hope you would be able to see something. I mean, the sun has been more intense in the past five minutes or so. Um, so Levine um, already uh, gave a bit away in his picture. What you see here behind me, this is uh, 20 times larger than the pilots we tested or we used during the testing for f -cubed. So I will just see if I can turn my camera around. Like this. Can you can you see that? Or yeah, is it too see. far away? All right, I will walk a bit closer. So what you see here is our uh, demonstration plant. Um, the the say the route starts with a black hose that you see lying on the grass. Uh, that's where well that is connected to our sludge line, so the feedstock for uh, the testing. That goes into let me see, you can see with my finger. Uh, no, it's very slow. So on the edge, <laughs> on the edge of this plant, there is a gray, light gray container, and that is a decanter centrifuge, which we use to pre-thicken the sludge. So the sludge is very dilute. Let's say it contains a 1% dry matter. By using the decanter centrifuge, we're going to thicken it to 5% dry matter. So after the decanter, this is fed into a... <laughs> into a container, which is, uh, uh, let's say, a darker gray in color. And that's where we uh, store all the thickened sludge we uh, are producing. From there is being fed into our hydrothermal reactor, which is the steel frame you see with the piping going zigzag downwards. So that's where all the reactions take place. So where we heat up the sludge keep it at a residence time of 30 minutes and then we cool down. The, um, our uh, reactor is being heated up by a blue container you see about here next to it. And that is a container with our, uh, that contains two um, electrical heaters that heat up uh, thermal oil which flows on the outside of uh, the reactor pipe. So it's basically a large heat exchanger. Um, the products that comes out of this reactor is collected into one of these uh, bins that you see here. So one of these gray uh, containers, we collect the products and from there it's pumped into something that is, uh, looks familiar. This is the filter press we also used for testing in the uh, F-cubed uh, projects on uh, every site. Uh, and as you can see here, we only do, let's say that we test part of the tor wash system. So the, the hydrothermal treatment and pressing, while all uh, testing related to the effluent side, so anaerobic treatment and nutrient recovery, samples are collected and are sent to the north of the country where uh, one of our partners will be doing a uh, long duration test uh, at lab scale, so large lab scale. Uh, right now we are, well, everything is connected to the power supply and to the control room, which you see just a window, if you can see that just in the back of the plant. Um, and uh, we will start uh, commissioning in six weeks from now where we first uh, test uh, all the dry testing, we'll do testing with water. And then mid-December, hopefully we can start uh, testing with uh, sludge. And that will be very quickly my, uh, <laughs> my live tour for you guys uh, from our demonstration site. Okay, thanks Pavlina. So I 
I can add a, a couple of things to it to, uh, on the uh, what, what you just saw. So the, the, it is it is a, a very elaborate installation, the, and the reason for that is that um, the part of the project is uh, are some duration tests. So the the, the from the three types of sludge. Um, so from uh, it's from from um, uh, um, not. Uh, what is it ook weer? Surplus slip. Excess sludge, a secondary sludge. Is, uh, that is, uh, has been tested, will be tested for 24-7 uh, 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 operation for 1,000 hours. Also digested sludge is also uh, tested for 1,000 hours. And we'll also receive some externals from external source uh, from a sludge from the wastewater treatment plant from um, uh, a slaughterhouse, which uh, which is also uh, uh, being tested for a uh, hundred hours, uh, so and that's why you need all these uh, these um, uh, these these uh, buffer tanks and, and settling tanks. These kind of things are really necessary to to uh, to. Uh, to make it make you able to uh, to have these uh, long duration tests. Okay, thank you.